Uh, the biggest misconception, I think, is to see it, to perceive it as a, as some local conflict, some regional conflict in that part of Europe. No, it's uh, the war of civilizations. I hate to sound bombastic like this, but that's very much true. And for anyone who is following uh, closely enough, it's more than obvious. Uh, my next guest, Ukrainian author Oksana Zabu Ushko has described her native country as having too much history per square meter, a place where the political and personal tensions of its citizens are permanently boiling. This tension has become a cornerstone of writing, and her ability to convey it in writing has earned her a cult Ukrainian following. I'd say more than that, she's a bit of a Ukrainian bestseller and beyond. Born in the northwestern city of Lutsk, but raised in Kyiv, Oksana's literary and philosophical prowess saw her springboard to teaching posts at Penn State University in the US and, of course, Kyiv University. This year, she became the first person who is neither an EU citizen nor an official to address a plenary session of the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Her transgressive work, which focuses on national identity and sexuality, was initially met with controversy back in the 90s, but she's now become one of the country's leading voices on provocative feminist writing. Oksana Zabushko joins me now, and I'm very honored to have her here. Uh, Oksana, as I understand, you were on a book tour in Poland at the time of the invasion in, in February this year. And That's Im right. Immediately you became an involuntary exile. Uh, tell me what you remember about that time, what you felt when you first heard the news. Uh, well, it is not that I first heard the news. I was awakened. I was awakened with the news at six o'clock in the morning uh, in uh, in my Warsaw hotel room, and uh, not understanding what what the hell is going on because I came for three days uh, tour for a book launch party, and uh, just uh, with a very tight schedule. So I didn't even take my laptop with me. I left oh, it. No. I left it back in Kiev. Uh, uh, well, because when you are scheduled for 19 interviews and two readings within three days, of course you can. You're not going to be watching uh, box sets, you are, are you? Not, <laughs> you are not. You are not. You are not planning, you know, to open your laptop and to work on it or whatever, you know. So and they carry on. Well, just uh, you know, two dresses for two readings and uh, some cosmetics, and that's it. So of course I. I uh, and when you get this phone call from home at six o'clock in the morning the first thing uh, that you thought is goodness what an idiot why he is calling so early well he knows I'm presuming you're talking about your husband uh, yes <laughs> <laughs> why he's calling so early? Why he's waking me up? Oh my, you know. Well, and then and then you hear this phrase, this sentence, which opens a new chapter in history, not only of my country, but in history of Europe. Honey, it started. It started, they are bombing us, but it started, that's been the key phrase, the keynote phrase that millions of Ukrainians were telling uh, to their loved ones. Uh, Echoing this around hour, the country, of this course. This hour, well, all over the country, around the world, it started, it started. So, yeah, that's how it started, and that's how, by the way, my my newly written book, uh, book long as he starts uh, with, uh, you know, sharing this story with my readers and then with uh, mm, and the title characteristically is my longest book tour. <laughs> <laughs> It was a fantastic so I am title. still on this book tour. Well, I've been home already in summer, mm. yeah. But uh, uh, but as uh, as Warsaw remains, alas, so far as the closest airport to Ukraine, and then it's a perilous uh, well, and very then long you can't, journey. You can't mm. have both national and international career, and uh, mm, and uh, yes, and you, somehow but, you but, have. But yeah. Also, in a way, do you feel that you're doing your work for the war. I mean, this is what I was just talking to Tatiana about, that, that in a way you are, you're doing your work for the war by promoting, exactly. you know, uh, uh, Ukrainian yeah. culture. Yeah, that's Ukrainian how I'm writing. justifying myself. Uh, and yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I don't think it's even self-justification. I think it's mm -hmm. very justifiable mm -hmm. um, because 
you know, in many ways, the thing that you've done is, is, is you've spent your time, you know, a lot giving interviews uh, on what the West has failed to understand about the Russian-Ukrainian mm -hmm. war. What, what do you think the biggest misconception is and the, and the biggest thing that, that we need to understand? Uh, the biggest misconception, I think, is to see it, to perceive it as a, as some local conflict, some regional conflict in that part of Europe. No, it's uh, the war of civilizations. I hate to sound bombastic like this, but that's very much true. And for anyone who is following uh, closely enough, it's more than obvious. I've heard many times uh, from uh, the journalists uh, from the interviewers in different countries uh, this uh, kind of uh, well uh, baffled question well but it is like mythology it is like it is like you know david and goliath it is like you know this all of a sudden all these myths uh, coming true and uh, and goodness how I mean maybe uh, maybe it's just um, maybe miss is the only adequate literary genre that captures uh, the events that momentous that affect the lives of millions and millions for the generations to come. So in, 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 in effect, a myth that's playing out in our lifetime yes, right now. Yes, exactly. Um, exactly. Obviously, um, for us, it's brought people like you into our lives. And as Tatiana was saying earlier, you know, for a long time, Ukraine has existed in Europe. Uh, but but not been a country that we've investigated uh, much time or energy into or indeed understood the culture of it, dare I say. That's my admission to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to know a bit more about you as a writer. Um, I don't know how many of your books are available in translation. I know this one is that I've got in front of me. Your ad could go here. Uh, but these are stories and you've also talked about, about your new book. Stories, but can yeah. we go way back and talk about your first novel, which was published, I think, in, in 1996, Fieldwork in Ukrainian That's Sex. Right. That's right. And I mean, this is a seminal text. This is a this is a, 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 a feminist manifesto in a way, but it's a, also a brilliant story that looks at your childhood in Ukraine and then your adult sexual relationships in the States. And it wasn't welcome, you know, because we can't just talk about Ukraine. You know, if we're going to talk about culture, it can't all be sort of perfect and, and brilliant. And I know it was met with quite a lot of controversy at sure, the time. Sure. So what were you doing that was so bad? <laughs> Well, yeah, I was a bad girl then, uh, you know, and it, it's been a huge literary scandal and I was dubbed a witch and I, w I went through the gauntlet of the most outrageous criticism and, uh, mm, well, an interesting time actually. Uh, but uh, I think it's, uh, every success is some kind of success scandal when you have half of the audience booing and half of the audience happily cheering so that's exactly the picture um, and uh, you're like the Edna O'Brien of Ukraine at that uh, time uh, aren't you <laughs> I'm just trying to put it into context for our listeners uh, could be probably well I don't know you name it uh, because uh, like every Edna O'Brien every Edna O'Brien is Edna O'Brien of its of her own yeah uh, so um, I s I'd say um, you know what's unusual um, What's been unusual and what remains unusual about this book? Uh, finally, last week um, I've been uh, in uh, in Utrecht uh, in Nether Utrecht, yeah. in Netherlands at uh, the Utrecht Literary Festival, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was having very interesting conversation with a young Dutchman who's just read a field work in Ukrainian sex, uh, well, in Dutch translation, and was sharing with me his experience. Uh, like, um, like I've heard for the first time, I've heard from a guy, this is my story, because the new generation sees it now as a story of, of toxic relationship. 
uh, well, abusive relationship, toxic relationship, uh, and do you see it manipulative like that? relationship. I mean, it's none of my business to see it now. You know, I've done my job uh, <laughs> 25 years ago <laughs> when I published it. And uh, that's an advantage of being a writer. You know, you don't have to work on interpretation or misinterpretation of your works. Uh, uh, books are like children, you know. Uh, well, they have the life of their own. They get grown up and then they they uh, they change uh, they change uh, get changed uh, with aging that is every new generation reads it in uh, their own way and uh, moreover every culture reads them in their own way because because we always prefer reading about ourselves we read to learn something about ourselves to recognize in a book we are reading something which helps us well to to learn something new about this world which is applicable uh, well in our case as well you know mm, so uh, so well uh, the what what the controversy has been uh, that I've translated uh, for the first time in uh, my culture and uh, it proved to be innovative for the other cultures as well. Um, I've translated this big narrative of national history into the very mundane, quotidian language, actually into the bodily language, female bodily language. And this kind of remains, uh, I would say, my uh, writer's subversive. manifesto, so mm. to speak. Mm. I mean, I uh, history interests me um, as long as it manifests itself on the everyday level. Uh, and the very simple, small things, history interests me uh, the way it affects us without our awareness, beyond our awareness and it does that's the problem and then like many female novelists you get accused of writing domestic novels or are the ukrainians cleverer than that <laughs> no uh, well i don't know it is not about ukrainians it's about myself uh, no uh, well i'd rather stay aside of domestic novels uh, and my next novel uh, was uh, this grand saga, the Museum of Abandoned Secrets, which, uh, which, which led us through, a, a which like won me many many international a prizes, which, led which us is also translated into English, by the way. Excellent. I use this moment to advertise. Don't yeah. worry, you don't Shamel need to shamelessly <laughs> advertise. We, we don't want to waste our talking time <laughs> advertising because we'll do the advertising for you later. But that <laughs> book, I think, traced. I mean, there's no way we can get all of this done in this interview. But I really want to know uh, about how how you've really traced a, 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 a great tumultuous changes in Ukrainian history uh, in the space of a novel. Well, uh, yeah, three generations. What's the country like now? You know what, because we're going to run out of time. What, where have those changes led us to? What is Ukraine now that it wasn't when you wrote about field you work and sex? You don't write about Ukraine, you know. I you know. write about, <laughs> about love and death. You want to write a story of a happy love, which is actually a, a challenge for every writer because... Uh, and every human. It's much, no, it's much easier to write a story of an unhappy love of a dr traumatic love or of a bad relationship then uh, the story we remember Tolstoy yeah that all these you know happy families are alike which may not be exactly the case I do believe that on the contrary uh, you know um, the happy families that I know are very different uh, so um, I would say uh, that's been like my I would say you know major idea uh, but um, but yes, uh, it's about three generations of the same family, the generations making it through history and important. Uh, what is important uh, and what is probably unusual for the British perception, the, uh, the members of this family don't know about each other because there has been constant interruptions of the continuity uh, mm. ma made with the two Miltus history of that part of the world which Timothy Snyder described as bloodlands. 
interesting and I'm going to put a whole list of your books available in translation onto my social media, onto Twitter and onto Instagram because I'm really fascinated now oh, and I want to read you. my way through the entire oeuvre. <laughs> I just think finally I should say to you and if you could answer me as briefly as possible because I'm in trouble already. Okay. Uh, the, Sorry. The, the, the longest book I'm tour. I'm notorious with long sentences. <laughs> oh look so am I. But the longest book tour Uh, what's the title of the new book? The uh, longest, the longest book tour. Not yet, not yet available in English. Not yet We available. Are negotiating with but, my agent. But yes. what I want to know is, how did looking at your country, as as someone forced outside of it, how did that change your view of it? I'm not looking outside of it. I'm still resonating emotionally and psychologically like I'm here, you know, on the day, on the second day of this uh, rocket uh, carpet bombing. Uh, and I've spent, yesterday I've spent the entire day trying to get in touch with my family because there were this, you know, interruptions of connection and, uh, and they were staying without electricity, internet, and And, uh, for hours and everything uh, so um, you learn to live with that you learn to live well, you know in that war mode and uh, and uh, it's probably even harder because emotionally you are there you are um, you are resonating uh, you know with your country and, uh, and at the same time uh, you you can't experience this along with them uh, which is which is easier when they get together you know in The, in the shelter, in the subway, and start singing. Well, of course, you know, it gives some kind of an emotional relief. Uh, something which I do miss being here. Um, well, but, but well, okay, uh, one can't have everything. You know, we all have our advantages and disadvantages in every condition. Well, I hear there might be some singing tonight for Ukraine Day here at the Cheltenham Literary Festival, Literature Festival, so maybe we can join together and do a bit of singing then. Uh, yeah, yeah, please join us. <laughs> <laughs> Oksana, we all are uh, in spirit at the very least. Oksana Zabushko, uh, thank you very much for joining me. And thank all you. of her books virtually, I think, are available uh, in, uh, in translation. And I recommend every single one of them. And I can't think of a better ambassador for Ukraine. And I'll be listing the titles uh, on my Instagram and Twitter. Thank you, Oksana. Thank you.